Hello, I'm Mike Mazzalongo. This is the Bible Talk video blog. I want to read a passage for you today out of uh, Isaiah 45 verse 23. Isaiah 45 verse 23 says, I have sworn by myself the word has gone forth from my mouth in righteousness and will not turn back, that to me every knee will bow, every tongue will swear allegiance. Now in this passage, God is speaking through the prophet Isaiah and he mocks the utter uselessness of idols while declaring His glory and His power. And he also warns his people of that day, the Jews, that this ignorance and this idolatry will one day come to an end. One day, God says, every knee will bow and every tongue will acknowledge the true God. Now if that passage sounds familiar, uh, Paul quotes this verse in Philippians chapter 2 verse 10 to point to the return of Jesus Christ as the final demonstration of God's glory. And for unbelievers, their last glimpse of God before their eternal condemnation, a really, a really harsh and really tough uh, passage not to understand but to accept. Both Isaiah and Paul the, pro, uh, Paul the Apostles uh, point to the fact that the final justice will be that scoffers and doubters and idolaters and unbelievers will be forced to confess to their dismay that what they so vigorously rejected in this life turned out to be true and the cause of their banishment to darkness. Now when Jesus returns, it'll be impossible to deny His existence his position. We won't be able to deny his power. Even the Taliban uh, you know, will concede his lordship. Now for believers, his appearance will be a vindication of their faith, a vindication of their obedience. And for unbelievers and the rest, his coming will be a final judgment, uh, that they were wrong to disbelieve, uh, that they were evil to reject his efforts to save them, and evil to confess another name because both the prophets and the apostles warned of His first coming and also warned of His return, we as believers should heed their word by doing several things. First of all, we should heed their word by keeping the faith. You know, your efforts to remain faithful, your efforts to serve and to give are not wasted. The Bible promises that one day you will be so happy that you remain true to Jesus Christ and made every effort to confess His name to others. That effort, that faith will be rewarded. As we await the coming of Christ, we ought not to be frustrated. You know, godless people, unbelievers, mockers, they'll always be in the majority. They will always have the superior platform to scoff at faith and, and those who rely on faith. So many uh, writers of books that deny God or that scoff at faith and religion, uh, you know, they get the big platforms on television and the uh, you know, publishers publish their books, uh, but it will not always uh, be so. Uh, don't let that frustrate and discourage you who believes because even though they may have the advantage now, the scriptures say they won't have it forever. In the same way that you believe that Jesus resurrected from the dead, believe that He will return, and when He does, all the mocking and all the disbelief will end suddenly. No one will be able to deny Him His place, and no one will be able to deny Him the honor that He deserves when He returns. And then one other thing, as we are waiting for Christ to return, don't waste your time. Isaiah the prophet promised that someday, that someday would come. And when it did, it would be too late for the Jews who had rejected him and all the prophets uh, that had uh, followed him. Paul said one day when Jesus returns, and, and the wise person is the one who realizes that one day could be, well, could be today. If you believe, and I'm speaking to believers, if you believe, don't waste any time in obeying Jesus uh, by confessing His name and repenting of your sins and being baptized to wash away all guilt. Don't, don't waste your time in putting off uh, those important things in order to respond to Christ in faith. And don't waste any time being unfaithful to Him, thinking that you can make up after He returns. 
His coming is for the faithful. He's not coming for the unfaithful. And if you need to be restored, if you need to you know, go back to being a faithful Christian, well, today is the day to do it. You never know. Tomorrow can be too late because tomorrow Christ could come uh, and take you in death or Jesus could come uh, 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 once again to take us all to heaven. So you know, we have no guarantee for tomorrow. We have to do what we know is right uh, today. And so when Jesus comes, I pray that all of us uh, will be in the middle of something, actually. You know, if someone said to me, what, what, what do you want to be found doing when the Lord returns? Well, I want to be in the middle of something. I want to be in the middle of a project that, that's building up the church. I want to be in the middle of perhaps baptizing somebody who's confessed His name. Uh, I want to be in the middle of worshiping God or being at a retreat or an activity. I want to be in the middle of studying uh, with someone about uh, the word of uh, God. I want to be in the middle of a spiritual warfare. Myself personally or as a group with the church, I want to be in the thick of spiritual warfare when He comes. Not just talking about what I used to do or talking about what I'm going to do. I, I want to be in the middle of doing something that furthers the cause of Christ when He returns. And so as we wait for Jesus, I encourage you, let's keep on believing, let's keep on hoping, and let's keep on working hard so we'll be happy to see Him when He appears. It'll be truly good news for us on that day. Well, that's the video blog for today. If you'd like to comment or write, have questions, you can write me at mike at bibletalk.tv. We'll see you next time. God bless you until then.